GM, 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 what's up, clubbers? In this video, what we are going to understand is how do we create a Dutch auction smart contract. What we will do is we will basically accept a donation, but the person who's donating, the amount that they will be able to donate uh, will keep reducing. Now, why would you want to do that? I don't know. But this is something, this is the functionality that we can later on use to sell NFTs or tokens. The Dutch auction smart contract has become fairly common these days but it was earlier i guess introduced by crypto kitties if i'm not wrong but before we get started please make sure to hit that like button subscribe to this channel if you're new if you want to send me a message please send it in the youtube comments i try to read each and every comment that i get and if you have a specific question come join my discord server post your question in the server there are a bunch of us who try to help each other out and sometimes i also try to chime in all right with that said let's get Start it. So in this video what we are going to do is we are going to create a Dutch auction smart contract which takes a price and it keeps reducing it as a way to auction. Starting price that we will take in this video is 5 ETH and we will keep reducing that by 0.01 ETH every minute. So with every minute that passes by the price reduces by 0.01 ETH. The lowest price that we will offer is 2 ETH, uh, which will sort of come after 300 minutes or 5 hours. Why 300 minutes? Because 0.01 into 300 will be 3 ETH and that is the amount that we will reduce in 300 minutes. And uh, the user who pays the amount will be stored as the donor in the contract, uh, just so that you know they also feel good about spending this money. In the next video, we will use this functionality to create an NFT collection which is which will be sold via the Dutch auction method. Alright then uh, let me open Remix uh, and create a new contract called auction.sol. Now let me just paste in the SPDX license and solidity version and let me just create a simple contract for now. The starting price will be 5 E, so that is what going, I'm going to set over here. So I've listed the starting price. Uh, the next thing that I want is the value at which we start the Dutch auction, which again will be an immutable value start at. All right, and we are not going to set this because what we will do is we will set this value when the constructor is called or when the smart contract is deployed. Then we have a duration uh, that we have already decided again, which will be immutable as of for this video. Otherwise, you can have it non-immutable as well. Uh, we know it's going to be 300 minutes or 5 hours, but let me just write 300 minutes. So the auction will run for 300 minutes and the discount rate, the amount with which we have to reduce the price, that will be 0.01 Ether. Of course, you can get all these value from the constructor if you're looking to create a generic Dutch auction smart contract. We should store an end price below which if the price goes, we will just simply accept the end price. All right. Now, of course, you can have this end price, end price as 0 ETH, uh, doesn't matter. But for our specific example, we are taking it as 2 ETH. Now, let me just create a constructor which will uh, take nothing. Actually, it doesn't need to take anything. Uh, what it will do is just call start at is equal to block dot timestamp. So what is block dot timestamp? Block dot timestamp is the value which is stored in the variable which is given by the block miner. So the block miner, uh, they give you a timestamp which is roughly equal to the time at which that block was mined or created I guess for ETH2. Using this timestamp what we'll figure out is how do we discount the value? How do we reduce the amount of Ether that we need to reduce? So the next method that I'm going to create is called uh, price which will return the current price of this auction. Uh, so this will be a public method and it returns a uint 256 but before we do that let me also create one more variable called nz and that i can uh, basically create over here uh, sorry initialize over here uh, with start at plus duration as the value if nz is less than timestamp which means the time has increased beyond nz value we return the value end price Otherwise, we just move on. 
<laughs> so now to calculate the price what we will do is uh, start price minus block dot timestamp minus start at which basically returns the time which has been elapsed into the discount rate all right now the problem with this is that block dot timestamp returns a value in seconds so we will basically get seconds over here but what we need are minutes uh, so just to do that what i'm going to do is create another variable called minutes elapsed all right and here what we will do is we will just put this value over here and divide this by 60 all right and uh, what we will do over here is then put minutes uh, elapsed into discount rate and then we return this value now we can put one more check over here where we will be like uh, this value is sort of stored in a variable and then we check whether that variable is greater than end price if it is not then we return end price i think that's a little bit unnecessary because block dot time timestamp will return the same value anywhere in a transaction because it returns the time at which the block was mined so this this function is available uh, to the public to check out what is the current value for this and then we will have another function which will basically receive money all right this function is public and payable and what it needs is a require statement which basically checks for msg dot value to be greater than or equal to the price otherwise we return with not enough ether sent all right and if the value is correct what we do is we also create another uh, variable called donor which is not set to anything uh, what we will do is now put donor equals msg dot sender we can also create another variable called final price and we can just store final price as the price at which the donor was able to send that send their ether and once we already have a donor uh, what we also need to add is the donor should be equal to address zero and if it is not equal to address zero it means somebody has already donated so we will write someone has already donated and just uh, to make it better i will just put the donor stuff at the top so let me just uh, zoom in again so it is much more visible to everyone but yeah this is the code that we have we have a start price we have start at ends at end price duration discount rate donor and final price uh, we have we set the start price at 5 eth the end price at 2 eth the duration to 300 minutes the discount rate to 0.01 eth uh, then we have a donor and final price which we have not set in the constructor we create the start at value though we save the start at value and we also save the ends at value which will be start at plus duration then in the price function which returns the correct price uh, we are first checking whether nz is less than block dot timestamp if nz is less than the current time then we return the end price because no point checking and after that what we do is we figure out how many minutes have elapsed so for example if you wanted to reduce uh, the the price over one hour what you would have done is instead of minutes elapsed you would have hours elapsed and you would have multiplied this 60 by another 60 because block dot timestamp returns an an integer the unix timestamp so this would have given you the number of hours that have passed and then the start price uh, minus minutes elapsed into discount rate so what is the amount that we have to reduce every minute times how many minutes have passed that is the total number of ether we have to reduce and subtract that from the starting price all right so let's go ahead and uh, compile this and we have found a couple of errors so when compiling i had received two errors which which basically said that i cannot use uh, immutable uh, variables in the constructor so i can only just set them so i have uh, simply written 300 minutes over here instead of uh, using the duration and i can just uh, safely reduce remove the duration variable Another thing that I've also done is added view to the price function because we are not really changing anything 
so this is just a view function a get function which does not require any gas so there's just been a small power cut but no problem we will continue i'm using the flashlight from my phone so hopefully this should work i'm just getting blinded by the light right now <laughs> Anyway, I've already compiled uh, this contract and now I'm going to deploy this uh, on the chain. So I click on deploy and there's power back. <laughs> yeah, once I click on deploy the chain, I can see that it has sort of deployed a bunch of stuff. I can see a lot of methods over here. Uh, let me just show them. So these are all the public variables that we have written, the discount rate, the donor, the end price, the ends at, the final price, the price, the start at and the start price. All right. So this price value should change with every minute. Now the problem is this is a, a JavaScript chain uh, which is on Remix and it doesn't really make changes until we make a call. All right. So we just have to wait or actually send a transaction for it to be updated. Uh, so that the value sort of changes over here. So I waited a couple of minutes or not even a couple of minutes I guess one minute and I checked the price again and it has sort of changed uh, by 0 0.01 ETH. It was 5 ETH now it's 4.99 ETH. So we know for the fact that the price function is working. Now let me try to send 498 4.98 4 ETH uh, to the receive money function. This should give me an error or actually just let me check will it give it will not give me an error <laughs> so let me just reduce that again by 10 so now this should give me an error because i'm sending less than the amount that is required and lo and behold it has given me an error uh, and if i check the price again it is still 498 so we just wait now for it for a minute to pass and then i think i hope this will not give me an error again so now when I check the value is 4.97 ETH, uh, I need to change this again to 4970 uh, and then send this transaction uh, to the receive money call. When I do that, the transaction passes uh, and you can check the price is 4970, uh, the NZ, nothing has changed, the final price and the donor should change now. The donor right now is null, right? which means it is set to zero address so i click or click on it and it changes to the address that i have all right and similarly the final price will also change to 4.97 eth now uh, you will notice that the the price function will still still keep on working because you know we haven't added any blockers here that you know if the fi final price is already available just return that so this will keep on working and as you can see it has changed to 4.96 ETH so let me try and send uh, 4.96 ETH now this should not work because uh, I've made I've added a check which says that donor should be zero address if it is not then someone has already donated so now when I press this I will get an error and the error basically says someone has already donated so this was a very quick way for you to create a Dutch auction this is the mechanism with which you create a Dutch auction. Now in the next video, what we are going to do is we are going to use this mechanism and create a Dutch auction for selling NFT collection. If you like this video, please make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new to this channel. If you want me to read anything, if you have any message for me, please leave it in the YouTube comments. Or if you have any specific question, Come join on my Discord server. There are a bunch of others just like you and me who are trying to help each other out. I hope to see you again next week where I will take this mechanism, this Dutch auction mechanism and use it to basically price an NFT collection. A bunch of other projects have done this and actually successfully done this. So this is something which you know you can use uh, for your own self. Thank you so much again for watching the video. I hope to see you again next next week. Till then, bye bye.